saints and welcome to our Sunday service message. I'll be sharing a, a different word with you the last time I spoke on the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to look at a different subject in a different area of scripture and it's going to be dealing with what we do with God's word and how we handle it, the benefits of, of dealing with God's word and uh, its importance. If you turn with me in Proverbs chapter two, matter of fact, that's the area that we're gonna be looking at today. We're gonna to just about cover all these, all the verses because it's important that we understand that this particular area of scripture describes a lot about the word of God. And, and of course, with the word of God comes God's wisdom, his thinking, his guidance and direction. And, and it's uh, described in Proverbs chapter two. So we're gonna look at that, but let's look at the first three verses and then we'll have a word of prayer. And so it starts off with verse one, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding. Heavenly Father, we pray for wisdom as we look into your word today concerning how important your word is and the benefits it has, what it actually does for us and guiding us in our lives today. We thank you for Proverbs 2. And we just ask you, Lord, to give us all understanding as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, the benefits of receiving and hiding God's word. Hiding doesn't mean to hide it away so no one else can get it. But it, if you want to, a good description would be absorbing and digesting. Because uh, the, the illustration I want to start off with and how important that is. You know, when we have medication to, to take, I know some of you have such good health, you don't have to go to the doctor for anything, but those of us who take medications or get prescriptions to take, the doctor will give that prescription, but on the bottle or the, the, the uh, that we have to take, uh, we get it from the pharmacy, it will have certain in, uh, important information on that on that bottle. It'll have information like the time that you have to take the medication, the name of it, what its actual name or uh, medical name is, and it will uh, uh, tell you the purpose. Uh, take it for this or when you have that or to help with whatever problems you may be having. And then of course, uh, uh, the doctor who prescribed it, that, that person's name, and then will also give you directions on uh, uh, some other uh, effects of the medication, what it will do. But when we get this, and I imagine if when the doctor gives us this, some people just can't stand medication. They say, I don't like it. I won't, I won't take it or whatever. And they don't take the medication. Of course, what it was designed for doesn't help. Some people don't trust doctors, so they don't take that. But the word of God is, is just as is more important than that medication in many aspects. When we don't take that medication and the world's medication or the physicians or the medical medications, we can take the chance of feeling worse or whatever we're going through takes longer to, to get better in some cases. And, uh, but God's word is so important that it's one of those medications that's prescribed 
that we cannot do without if we want our spiritual lives to be successful, to be healthy, and to deal with any problems that we're going to have in this life. It's like a life pill, a life medication, whether it's a liquid uh, a pill that we take. Whatever it is, it gets into what? Our bodies, we absorb it, and, and uh, we digest what has been prescribed. Now, God has prescribed something for us in his word. And this area of scripture in Proverbs chapter 2, it's one of those Proverbs that really, if we look at it in that light, we can see the benefit of it. Sometimes we wonder about how important, you know, at, at, at the Abundant Life Bible Mission, you know that we're always talking about stick, sticking with God's word, uh, read it, uh, absorb it, uh, meditate on it, memorize it, do everything you can. But it's a very important reason for that. And it's all in Proverbs chapter two. And it also talks about the quality and the importance of it, just like any medication that we may take. Now, so he says in verse one, my son, if thou wilt receive my words, his word, God's word, my word. It's, it's like a father talking to a son, but the Lord allowed this scripture here so that we as the children of God can see the importance of sharing with them, just like we should share with our children, whether boys or girls, this is important. Not, not only your earthly father, but your heavenly father has the word of God for you. And if you look at this, these directions, it can help you to understand. You know, people believe a lot of what stories are, what somebody else said, and the illustration they give, and oh, they gave that illustration. Well, you know, this is coming from God's word in Proverbs. It's the Proverbs are, are words of wisdom, of the wise. Wiser than any intellectual. I don't care how many degrees you have, how much study you've been, how much travel you've done, and how much uh, digging into information. That does not make you an expert on life. The only expert I know in life in every degree is God because he created life. Now, if you don't believe that, then you probably won't believe anything I'm going to be saying from now on. But if you do believe God's word, you do trust in what he says, and you look to God to give you directions, then you can understand what I'm saying, how important it is. And if you've been running around this world trying to find answers for everything and questions that you have, it's important that you listen right now because Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, especially verse uh, chapter two, is very important. Now, he says, when you receive my word, when you see my word and you hide it or absorb it or digest it, my commandments, his commandments is his word, the word of God, with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. In other words, you listen to wisdom. You listen to what wisdom is saying. When you read, not only your ears hear it, um, uh, like I've said, faith comes by hearing. When you hear God's word, this is why I said I started listening to God. Just listen to it. Not only read it, listen to it. There have been many uh, in, in the past, when the word of God first came out, if you were the only educated, illiterate one that could understand and read God's word, the rest of the, rest of the world was in trouble. But what they did, they read God's word aloud to the congregation and the people around who were listening. So he's saying, when you hear what I'm saying, it's not about me writing it down. It's good to be written down. That way you can keep it, read it, and read it to someone else. But when you hear what God's word has said, and you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, and if you cry, thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up that voice for understanding. Now, people are crying for knowledge. They want to know what's going on. They want to know how things work. They want to know uh, how important things are, how, uh, what's going on, uh, what's behind the scenes. People are looking for that on the news, on TV and all this. They're looking, but they're looking at, for the wrong thing that's behind the scenes. The most important thing is the most honest and truthful thing that you're going to get. And that's going to be from God's word and understanding. We want to understand what's going on. I don't, you know, one of the first things that, that, that come, I just don't understand what they're either 
trying to apply, trying to tell me, trying to do. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what God is doing. I don't understand why people are the way they are. I don't understand this world. I don't understand anything that's spiritual. I don't understand why I act and do and, and, and conduct myself the way I do. Understanding is in God's word. All these th questions that we're asking is here in God's word. If you listen, that's the bottom line. Will we listen? Now, the quality of applying God, what is the quality? How good is it? That's one of the first things. You know, I want to buy some. I want to buy something that really is going to work. I want to buy the top uh, quality device or top quality uh, elements or, or materials or things in life. People look at stuff and they hear the name of a particular product and they say, oh, that's the best there is. Well, the best there is is God's word when it comes to knowledge, wisdom, and getting understanding. You can't do any better than God. That is listening to what God has to say, and you can't do that until you take the time to have that intimate relationship with him. That's important. You know, women out trying to find some guy that's going to answer all their, their prayers and questions. I was looking for a mate, and I'm looking for a husband. I'm looking for this and that. Out of this world, I'm looking for satisfaction out of this world. If you keep looking, you'll never find it because you never will be satisfied because the things in this world didn't make you. It has formed you. It has uh, influenced you, but it has not made you. God has made you. You need to get in contact and in a relationship with the person that and, and, and the entity that made you, that is God. It's God the Father, God the Son. And then when you have the Holy Spirit, when you receive the Son, you have all three. We all become together as one and you're in that uh, in that relationship. That's a, a grand relationship, but you can't have it until you listen. What does he have to say? Now, verse four, five, and six says, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures. That means looking for God's word and what he said and looking for his wisdom and his commandments and his instructions and directions, absorbing that like it would, uh, like it was silver and gold. And what is most of the countries, most of the people in this world, what are they fighting over? Diamonds and silver and gold and everything that they consider so precious that the, the men will just sell their own souls, their own, their own children and everything for money, for all those things that money can buy and the things in this world. People will go after that. They want uh, uh, status. They want to be important. They want to be looked up to. They want to be powerful. They want to be in control. When people go after things like that, they think they're getting something so precious, but the sad thing is when they get it, it's so sad because it does not satisfy. But we need to go after the things of God's word like people go after the things like silver and uh, uh, and, and for hid treasures. You know, you hear about guys going out in the waters and they buy all this equipment and they almost lose a lot of diving and trying to find some treasure. Uh, or ship that's 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 uh, or, or anything that's dug and put under the ground to go do all these excursions to go looking for it, but they need to be looking for what God has to say. If you seek for me like these people seek for that stuff, then shalt thou understand and fear the Lord. And when you go after God the way men go after that, you're going to find that the fear of the Lord. He said, the fear of the Lord, how's that going to, oh, that's going to help. That's really going to help. The fear of the Lord is the most precious thing. It's better than silver and gold because it puts us in the right frame of mind for everything that we have to deal with. Matter of fact, you can't even go to a school or, or a store or a company that can't manufacture it. They can't do anything but try to uh, replace it in some kind of way or to fraudulently uh, duplicate, but it's, it's, it's still a duplication. It's not the real thing. So when you find the fear of the Lord, you find the knowledge of God, verse six, for the long, 
Lord giveth, gives wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Where did he say it came from? Did he say it came from in a country somewhere? If you dig it up, if you go on this mountain, if you eat these plants, if you uh, are, are going to, un, in the sea, if you go to these places, if you grab all of these minerals and things together, you're going to find what? Uh, you're going to find wisdom and knowledge and understanding? No. Where, where it comes from, it says in verse 6, the Lord gives that. He gives the, the wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Not from TV shows and programs. That's not knowledge and understanding. That's just people talking stuff. They don't even know what they're talking about. But God does. And you won't get it unless you get into his word. Listen to what he has to say. So he can speak to your heart. Now, there are, that's the quality. That's how important it is. Now, what are the properties? How? What makes up what's going on? What are the properties that go with listening to his word? Verse 7, 8, 9 says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Righteous doesn't mean you act like you're just better than anybody else or you're just so goody. No, righteous means to be right with God. He'll give it because people have listened to what God has said and they try to apply it and do. And that makes a person, uh, you know, there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians says, Jesus Christ is made us the righteousness of God. When we listen to what God has to say, we know that Jesus has to be implemented in our hearts and lives. And that is makes us righteous. Not our actions, not that we're people. We are nothing. We're filthy rags. Our own self-righteousness is like a filthy rag. A dirty old nasty rag. That's the last thing you'd pick up to clean something. But God can clean it up. Because if you're trying to do it yourself, you're messing it up. But just let the Lord do it. See, it says, verse 7, he lays up that wisdom. It's like we has when you're righteous. It makes us righteous because he applies it to our hearts and lives. He applies it through Christ. He is our righteousness. When we apply it right. And then it says, he is a buckler to them that walk upright. A buckler. A buckler you know, I used to hear the term uh, a swashbuckler. Uh, they used to have a little covering over their hands when they carried a sword. But that, that covering was a shield for the hand. So they call that a buckle. But they also call shields. Anything that you hold up to guard you is a buckle. It's a buckler that holds uh, together, puts up a defense. And a buckler, but he says in verse seven, and he is that is that wisdom that God is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. When we walk up, we don't know how to walk straight. We have to be trained and taught, and that comes from His wisdom. When we're walking straight, it means we're trying to follow the path that God has told us because we listened. And so, when we start taking that medication, like we would take, we start. Going to and it gives us a defense. Now, a good example. COVID nineteen. What for the first year or so, there was no what? There was no vaccine. Man, we gotta make it back. Best thing we could do is wear a mask, stay away from each other, wash our hands, do all this stuff. Then they said they came up with what? A vaccine is like a buckler. His word is the buckler or the vaccine to us dealing with stuff that's in this life. We know how important it is because when folks came out with it, they got in line, they got their shots, and then they had a slight defense against that COVID, that dangerous COVID that was killing people by the thousands at a time. This is what God's word is like in our lives. We need to absorb that vaccine into us so we can deal with the with the uh, dangers that are in this world. And we're going to get into those dangers because they, they're in Proverbs chapter 2 also. Now, let's move on. He keeps the paths of, uh, uh, he keeps, verse 8, he keep, 
keepeth the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Here we go again, the benefits. He gives us a shield. He, uh, he gets something that's sound and solid, solid wisdom. And now he keeps our path in judgment and preserveth the way of the saints. Now, how important is that? And, you know, one of the things I do when I usually look at scriptures, I look at the words. The words are very important because they use words and it meant something to them when they read it. Now, this is, look up the words. Look at look it up from the, the the Hebrew and the Greek to understand the application of the words. Sometimes they use words we use today; they don't mean the same thing. But these, in a sense, will because they're very familiar. So, but we're talking about keeping the paths of judgment. Judgment, judgment is the act of deciding a case. That means what? How do we decide on the judgment? Judges are supposed to go there. Look, don't go by with these worldly judges. They're supposed to go by the law. Well, of course, they go by their own opinion. And that's one of the things that we don't want to do. We don't want to go uh, uh, or to look and uh, make a decision about things in our lives. This is what we're talking about. His word gives us the right judgment. How do we judge or look at what's going on around us? Everybody that says they, they, uh, they are this and they are, they are that. And someone over here is, is saying something different. And when we should look at it, we said, God, how should we look at this? And I'm going to tell you, 10 times out of nine, uh, 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 nine out of 10 to 10 and 10, the best judgment is going to be what God judges and feels. How does the Lord feel about this? How does he feel and think about uh, these things that are going on? The, the issues that people are arguing and protesting about today. Judgment is, is, we can make that sound judgment by what God has said. Stop trying to go by how I feel. One of the first things the world comes up with today, it makes me feel. It makes me feel like that. It makes me feel like this. And well, everybody else, okay, we're going to go by how you feel here. But then someone else says, but I feel like that. It's not about feelings. It's about what does God have to say about it? And, and, and I'm going to be out, out with you. Sometimes you, if you're honest with yourself, sometimes I don't agree. I may not agree. I want to agree with what God says, but I know, I got better sense to know it's the best thing to do. It's what God says, not what man says, not what this one said, not what that one says. But if God said it in his word, I'm sticking to it. And then when you find out, boy, I'm glad I did stick with it because that is the right decision. It's the righteousness. It's the understanding and the wisdom and the right judgment, the right call for anything in our lives, especially dealing with God and preserve. He preserves the way. That means that he keeps God again and keeps watch and, and protects and saves. He keeps us from getting caught up into a mess. When we do that, when we seek the Lord's wisdom first, just heard uh, uh, Brother uh, Cole uh, talking about that. And that's, that's, that's always been the case. That's why the, the scripture said in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and don't lean on your own understanding. You see, that's the thing. Flesh wants to get in the way and do what flesh wants to do. But if we don't lean on our own understanding, stop and say, okay, Lord, Point me the right way. What should I do? What should I do about this? Let me seek your wisdom. And the flesh said, Fuck the flesh. when you do that, the flesh stomps off to the side like some old uh, old child has gotten mad and starts pouting because he can't get his way. That's what the flesh does. But the Spirit of God brings peace, keeps you from doing or making decisions to get into something. And then sometimes we get we get in the middle of something and we need his wisdom to do what? Get out. I bet we stop and say, okay, Lord, get me out of this. What should I do to get out of it? Because you already made a decision to get in it. Now you need him to what? Get you out of it. And, it, and does the Lord say, I ain't doing nothing? Nope. When we are sincere, we call. He helps us with that situation. He preserved the way of the saints. I said, not just anybody. A saint 
is not a perfect person. It's a person who has a belief and faith in Jesus Christ. That makes a person a saint. Not that they're all good and got a halo around their head. That's the world's vision of it. No, that's a person who's made Christ their Lord and Savior. Now, verse 9 says, Thou shalt then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. No, this is a lot, lot, lot of things going on with God's word, isn't it? Sound wisdom, buckler, judgment, pre, uh, preserving. And then it says, uh, and then and now he's giving us understanding about being the righteousness and judgment again, how to judge and the equity. Equity, yeah, in every good path. Equity, when we're talking about equity, that means evenness and the levelness and the smoothness. The right way of looking at things is equity. This is one of the things people are crying about now. They want equity for this and equity, pay equity and, and, and consideration and want all these things in equity. But you know, we have to also live in equity. God produces equity. When we start getting off of God's way of doing things, that's when things start getting uneven and unequal. Because there's always going to be somebody who cries foul. One of the first ones going to cry foul is Satan. If God says it, Satan going to come up with a way to say, oh, no, that ain't right. Uh, it, it doesn't go like that. And it's been like that from the beginning of time. That's one of the things about Adam and Eve. When you read that area of scripture, you always can see how nothing has changed. Satan, God says, don't do this and make sure you handle things this way. And here comes Satan putting what? Doubt on what God has said. Is this the right way to do this thing? And all this stuff that he puts in our heads and minds, and not only him, the world, the flesh, and the devil are all working together to pull. This is why we need a, a shield and a buckler. We need the, the, uh, the uh, arm of God. Now, He says, thou shalt understand everything in a good path. What is a good path? It's what path that God wants you to go on. Even Jesus told them uh, in, in verse 18 of Mark 10, 18 says, and Jesus said to him, that, uh, the man called him, called him good. He said, why call me good? There's none good but one, and that is God. We're talking about the goodness of God, not the goodness of what you describe goodness, or what you're saying is good. A quick brick, a quick breaking in a bank and getting away with the money. He said, man, that was good. That wasn't good. There's none good but God. We have to be careful what we think is so good. The banker robbed, stole things from people and said, I had a good day. That's not good. But we're talking about the goodness of God. How are we going to live our lives and truly be what, what is right and what is good? Is we got to listen, take in, absorb, and hide his commandments. Now, we have another section we'll look at. What effects? Now, we know that this is uh, as we apply, but it also has some other effects, more additional effects. And this goes from verses 10 through verse 12. You notice it looks like it's winding up being three verses at a time. It gets into a, an additional description of God's word and how we can apply wisdom. So we look at this. Verse 10, it says, When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Now listen, just remember I said hiding it, we absorb it, we digest his word. And he says, when you let that wisdom, that's, this is the wisdom of God's word, enters into your heart, gets down into our hearts. And then the knowledge of what God wants us to do, we understand and we know this thing. It says it's pleasant to the soul. This is when people start feeling satisfied. This is why they, they don't need to go to the psychiatrist so he can ask them how they feel about stuff. To figure out that if we do what God wants us to do, it's going to be uh, beneficial to our souls. We're going to feel the the uh, the grace of it. 
This is why everybody's all uptight. Everybody's saying, well, the pandemic kept them in and they're just losing their mind about stuff. They're mad, they're angry, they're anxious and worried and frustrated. And nobody's saying, well, go to God, go to his word. No one's saying that. But when we do it, our soul gets satisfied. Verse 11 says, discretion. When we have discretion, shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Now we know that to be discreet is to have, uh, I looked at discretion means the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing of private information. It means you're being discreet. You don't have to, that's one of the things this world is not looking for. They're looking for things that aren't discreet. They don't, they want to put everything out there instead of, you know, the scripture said love covers a multitude of faults. When a person has been in a fault, the love for that person means I'm going to be discreet. I don't need to go out here and flash it to everybody. Ooh, look what so-and-so did. If I love that individual, I don't go around trying to stuff. If somebody comes to you about something negative about another brother or sister, you don't say, ooh, let me go tell somebody else. No, you're discreet. And that you won't have that discretion if you don't have God's word in your heart. Because when his word is in our hearts, we are discreet. We have discretion about how to deal or talk to people about stuff. About dealing with their needs. About not getting caught up with the world's way of doing things. We use this question in speaking, quality of how we speak. And he says, uh, verse 10, discretion shall preserve thee. It preserves us. Understanding shall keep thee when we understand uh, uh, what, what, the, uh, what the needs are, not only of God's word, but the other needs of other individuals. And it says, verse 12, to deliver thee from the way, this is important, Verse 12, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. Now, the first thing we think, there's some evil people out here and he, the word will deliver me from them. It will, but I'm going to tell you, the first evil one we have to deal with is who? Ourselves. His word will deliver us from that evil man. Man's heart is desperately wicked, desperately wicked. Who can know it? But his word puts things in perspective and in place, even though that old flesh. See, the evil man is that old, old fleshly nature, way of thinking and doing and desiring and taking control of our lives. That's an evil man, as the scripture says. But his Word, taking this, absorbing and digesting his word and objecting uh, what he has uh, directed us to and led us to understand, it will deliver us from that evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things. Now, not only other people on the outside, but ourselves, we speak froward. And that word froward, froward is an important word. When you look at it, that means preserves unreasonable and unacceptable, obstinate, and it's opposed to that which is right, reasonable, uh, or accepted. That's a forward person. Always talking about, I'm going to do this and do that, and, and, and putting down everything that is right, acceptable. Yeah, we hear this on the news all the time from other people. Well, they're on, on the outside of the kingdom of God and the will of God. We know how that evil man talks. But sometimes we can get caught up in it a little bit. Like Isaiah says, Lord, I've been around men with unclean lips. And then we'll start talking about throwing stuff about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And uh, we're going to make our own decisions. And it's unacceptable and it's obstinate and it opposes the will of God. We can get it, get caught up. But his word keeps us from that. As soon as we start going or thinking that rock, what pulls us back? That medication, that defense. 
of God's word that's in our hearts. And the first thing we say, uh oh, back up off of that. That's not going to work. Let me squash that right now. But you won't be able to do it because you don't have that absorbed and digested part of his word in us. It becomes what? Just like the COVID uh, vaccine. Do you have to think about it? So, okay, I'm around somebody. Okay, COVID vaccine, go to work. If we had to do that, we'd everybody would catch it every five seconds. But we don't have to do that, do we? Unconsciously, we know it's in there. It's doing what it has to do through us to give us that shield away from the virus or keeping that virus from being uh, a deadly issue in our hearts and lives. We may catch it, but it won't won't do the damage that it, it was designed to do or, or wants to do. Same thing with God's word. That evil man will be put in check. Now, let's go on to some other things. Now, we have some outside and interior influences that we have to deal with in life. But because we have, we've been taking and absorbing God's word, memorizing its applications in our hearts and lives so that we can deal with things that will come up in our hearts and lives, the influences, it says in, in Romans, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And see, our minds get renewed when we start absorbing God's word. And so the world won't try to mold and make us on the outside influences, but we also have some in, interconnections that also try to influence our hearts and lives. But verse 13 through 15 says, And we're talking about the, uh, let me go to deliver thee from the evil man and uh, also the speakers for things in, in 13 says, who uh, le uh, leave the paths of, of uprightness. You see, the, the wicked man leaves the path of under uprightness. That means you can go backslid and you stop. You don't walk the path of God's directions. You don't listen to uh what the word has been saying, and to walk in the ways of darkness. And the next thing you know, you're walking in dark ways. How many people have you known that says, man, they, they were really serving the Lord, but now they're walking in dark ways? Well, that's because they hadn't been taking the medication of the God's word. Verse 14 says, who rejoice to do evils. See, when you're walking that way, you're glad to do evil and, and delight in frowardness of the wicked. Ooh, that's pretty cold. But people get that way, especially if you fall into a backslidden condition. You want to hang around the people who are like this that are fraud, and you want to talk with them, and you think you're confident. I've, I've talked to some people in the world, and they saw uh, individuals they know were serving the Lord, but all they're backslid. They went out back into doing some of the same stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I've said this before, the world does not appreciate a person who has walked with the Lord and then starts living a life they know is not godly. But this is what happened because they have not held on to the word of God and its importance. Therefore, they start walking and the world starts putting them down. The world doesn't want you. And, and, and the, the bad influence and people that look at you say, man, you were, uh, I, I remember you were hanging in there with Jesus, but now you're not. But it's the word of God can, can, can heal you from that. First, they, you won't, they were glad to do evil and delight in being froward and doing wickedness. And then they said, whose ways are crooked in verse 15. And then, and they throw it in their paths. That's a bad backslidden condition. That's a person who, who's, is, you know, if you are taking medication that really helped you, or, or you know it was beneficial, it kept you together in whatever illness you were going through, and you stop, then the next thing you know, all of the problems of the issue that you are trying to handle starts to, what overtake your life, your body, your strength, your your even your looks, 
and everything, your health goes down. What do you think happens if we don't take God's prescription of listening to his word and hiding his word? Well, we end up being the same way. The last area, I'm sorry, uh, in Proverbs 16 through 19, it says to deliver thee also now, we talk about the man, also from what? The strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. This is why so many men fall out of, of God's grace because then they start listening to the flattery of, of strange women. That means other women. They get enticed. And it's the same thing with, with, with women the same way. But sad to say, in this world and time, we find out to deliver you from what they said was the, the froward man. That could also go for a woman who's being influenced from someone in this world. It can deliver you from that froward person that you can see that their actions are not together. Now, we get into, he said, the strange woman. And we know that, that that strange woman can influence another man. But the sad thing about today's day and time and what is being accepted in this world is other women being influenced by other women in those ways that we talked about in Romans chapter 1. Men with men and women with women. And we know that we have this whole situation to the point that now they're saying it's okay to get married. Also good to have a relationship. And if you don't know God's word, people are starting to tell you about how it feels, how it feels like this, and you're going to be overcome. And that wickedness is going to overcome you in your thoughts and your actions if you don't absorb what God has put before you. For verse 17, for, for which forsakes the God of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. You see, she's forgotten the covenant of her God. She's forgotten what she has been trained. We're talking about people who have been exposed to the leading and teaching of God's word. And these are people who fall out of fellowship with God as a result. And then they are caught up in this whole situation and this world situation. And, and it's right in your face. Look at the commercials today. This is supposed to be okay. Now they're arguing and scrambling over what names to call each other. We don't know whether to say gay, lesbian, queer, or what. Where does this come from? Well, Romans for, uh, chapter 1. He says that when what she forgot, God left them over to a mind to start thinking like that. So next thing you know, everybody's thinking that this is okay, and it's not okay. Verse 18, for a house inclines unto death and her paths unto the dead. That's what, that's what it leads up to, to death and house leads to the dead. Verse 19 says, none that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life, true life, abundant life, the life of God and his ways of knowing and thinking. You missed it and you, you, you flushed it away and let's, they can repent. Now, the last thing we're going to close with this, verses 20 through 22, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men. Now, that thou mayest, how can, you can walk the paths of good men and keep the paths of the righteous when we go back to verse 1, receive and hide his commandments. 
so that you will incline your ear to that wisdom and apply it to your hearts and understanding. Then you'll have, you can walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. Verse 21, for the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. Perfect doesn't mean you're perfectly right, but the developed and, and, and uh, for the, the, the purpose of God's uh, pleasure in living, they will remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Look long enough for those who are transgressors. And I don't mean this transgressors because, you know, everybody says, Lord, Lord, are supposed to be so godly. Or because I'm going to tell you, some of these religious institutions have done some wicked and vile things. They have influenced people in the wrong way. But guess what? God said, I told you that was going to happen. There are going to be false prophets, false uh, religions, false teachings. And the only way you're going to know to get out of it is to get in God's word. Now we got everything from the world pulling on you to all this false belief. And even today, and it's been doing it for a while, people saying Jesus is over here, Jesus is over there. If we don't get into God's word and, and measure it by what he said, we will be deceived. This is why those who don't fall behind these things, they look at them like, man, you're weird. How come you don't get go with this, man? Look how big this place is. Look at all the people in here. It's got to be right. Doesn't mean a thing. If, you, if they don't pass the word of God test, doesn't mean a thing. If they haven't kept God's word and his commandments, and incline their ear, ears to his wisdom and apply their hearts to understanding when they do it. So we need to seek for God's knowledge, seek for his voice of understanding because it's more precious than gold in this day and time. And many times we can't get it from these, uh, these places that most people are looking for answers from, but we can get it from God's word. And he said it. Proverbs chapter 2, read it, study it, listen to what it's saying, and it will be a buckler, a protection, a guide, a deliverer. It will give us equity and help us to make the right judgments. That's how important it is. I'm going to stop right there, saints been a little longer because we did cover a whole chapter, but I want to speak to those that are listening. If you're listening and under the sound of my voice and you're thinking about these things, Jesus Christ is the only way in this day, to, day and time. If you haven't accepted him, you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, you can do so. Not too late. If any man hear my voice and come, and open the door. Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, man, woman, boy, girl, hear my voice, open that door. That means your heart. He said, I'll come into him. I will go into that person. I will suck or live with him. And he's going to live with me. From your decision to follow after Christ, search for his wisdom and his words and his ways. I'm going to make the changes. Don't worry about what you got to change. If you truly accept him, he'll guide you into all truth. And you can accept him into your heart and life. And you can do it right now. I'm going to pray with you and pray that you uh, just follow me in this prayer. It's not just the words, but it's what you really want God to do in your heart and life. And I want you to pray this prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. And I want Jesus to come into my heart and life to be my Lord and Savior from sin. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and born me into your family and help me to live my life from this day forth by your power and your might. For it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen and amen. That's it for today, saints.
I just pray that the Lord will bless you with, in this message. And uh, those who have accepted Christ, if you pray that prayer, get in contact to the mission, right to the address at the end of the uh, message. And uh, we'll be glad to help you to grow spiritually and to give you some material to help you to grow. So as Jesus said in John 10, 10, B, and don't forget what he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. <laughs>